Hello, welcome to Engineers Escape. My name is Jake, and today we're going to be talking about some basic mathematics. All right, number one. Write the answer in exponential form. 8 times 8 times 8. Now, exponential form means in the form of something like this. e to the x. And that means e times itself however many x times. So in order to write this in exponential form, 8 times 8 times 8, that would be 8 times itself 3 times. Number 2. Solve 3 squared times 3 to the third. So 3 squared means 3 times 3, and that is 9. And 3 to the third means 3 cubed. So 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 again is 27. And let's see what 9 times 27 is. I had to use a calculator for that one, in case you're wondering. Number three, solve the following. One to the power of 47. So one times itself 47 times. One times one is one, times one is one, times one is one. So one to whatever power is still equal to one. Two to the power of two. 2 times 2 is 4. 7 to the power of 3. 7 times 7 is 49. Times 7. I'm going to have to use a calculator for that one also. 343. Number 4. Write each fraction in decimal format. So decimal format just means something like 1.517 with a decimal place instead of fraction form like these are shown. So 81 divided by 100, that would be 0.81. And if you wanted to see that broken down, if you start with 81, since you have two zeros here, in 100, you would just move this over two decimal places to get 0.81. 3 divided by 10, that's a simple one, 0.03. Again, if you started out with 3, you have a decimal point right here. You would just move it over 1, so it would be 0.3. 37 divided by 50. Now we could type that into the calculator and get it in decimal form. Or I'll show you something else you could do. 37 divided by 50. Now if you multiply anything by 1, you get the same thing you started with. So a trick would be to multiply this by 2 divided by 2. Okay, so... This 2 divided by 2 is just 1, so we're just multiplying it by 1. So if we look at the top, 37 times 2. I don't know what that is off the top of my head, but I do know that 35 times 2 is 70. And that leaves 2 left, so 2 times 2 is 4. So that should be 74. Divided by 50 times 2 is 100. So now that we have it in this form, base 100 is a little bit easier. So that would just be 0.74. Number 5. Write each decimal as a fraction. So this is the decimal format already, and it wants us to write these as fractions. So 0.4. That would just be 4 divided by 10. Or you might also say that is 40 
divided by 100 or you might also say that's 400 divided by 1000 0.1 that would be 1 over 10 another way to actually read these is 4 tenths and 1 tenth and that's literally how you would also write them okay the next one we have some algebra solve for x in the following equations a is x plus 3 equals 5 now don't get scared about this letter here all that really means is essentially a question mark so in other words question mark plus 3 equals 5 so well, let's try 2 plus 3 2 plus 3 equals 5 So therefore, x equals 2. b, negative 6 plus x equals 9. And this one's a little more tricky. But what you can do, negative 6 plus x equals 9. Now we want to get this negative 6 away from this x so that we know what x is equal to because that's what it's asking us for in here. So in order to get that negative 6 away from here we would add 6. And whatever you do to one side of an equation you have to do to the opposite side of an equation. So negative 6 plus 6 is 0 so that leaves x on this side. And 9 plus 6 is 15. And that means we just solved for x. So x is 15. And you could check it if you put this back in here. Negative 6 plus 15 equals 9. And that is correct. Letter C. 10x equals 130. Now whenever you see something in front of the x, that just means to multiply it. So it would be the same thing as 10 times x equals 130. Or another way you could write that instead of a dot as multiplication, you could also just write that as parentheses instead. Or as they had, just write 10 in front of it. Alright, so let's solve this. So. 10x equals 130. So I could say in my mind here 10 times what equals 130? So 10 times 13 equals 130. So x would be equal to 13. But if I didn't know that, just by thinking about that in my head, again, Whatever you do to one side of an equation, you have to do the other. And remember, we're solving for x. So 10x divided by 10, that would leave us with 1 times x, or just x on the left side. Then on the right side, 130 divided by 10. So that means x equals 13. Number eight, convert to the given units. So starting out, we have 200 millivolts, and it's asking us, how many volts is that? And I'm going to show you this table before we get started on this and explain what it is. Okay, so if you've never seen it, this is the SI prefixes chart. On the left, it tells you the factor. Next, it says the name then there's the symbol, and then there's the numeric value. So essentially, these are useful um, for converting large into smaller units, or vice versa. And th these all relate to the back to the value one. So if you have a one kiloamp, or kiloamp, 
that means you have 1,000 amps. If you have one mega amp, that means you have one million amps, giga, tera, and so on. And you can see each of these prefixes actually have a symbol that corresponds with them. You won't see a ton of the super big or the super small ones, but I'll just go through it anyway. So 10 to the 12th is Terra, means capital T. 10 to the 9th is Giga, capital G, like gigabyte or terabyte similar, similarly. 10 to the 6th is Mega, with a capital M, so value of 1 million. 10 to the 3rd is Kilo, small k, uh, 1000. These ones aren't used very much, the hecto and the deca, but they do exist. Uh, same thing with the deci. Centi is sometimes used like a centimeter. So that's just a tenth. Deci is a tenth, and centi is a hundredth. Okay, so the one you'll see a lot is milli, so ten to the negative third, or in other words, one thousandth. It's a small m prefix. Negative. 10 to the negative 6th is micro. This funny looking M, uh, that's actually the symbol mu. I believe that's a Greek letter. And yeah, that means 1 millionth, or 1 divided by 1 million. 10 to the 9th, the even smaller nano. And 10 to the negative 12th is pico. And those are small n, small p. Okay. 200 millivolts equals how many volts? So, milli means 1 over 1,000, or 1,000th. 1 so if it's just asking us for it in the base unit of volts, we would divide this by 1,000 to get volts. So, 200 divided by 1,000 equals, cross some of these zeros out to make it a little easier, 2 divided by 10, so that would be 0 0.2, 0 0.2 volts. The next one, 0 0.03 volts equals how many millivolts? So we're just kind of going in the opposite way. So, There's 1,000 millivolts for every volt. So one way you could do this is say, if you have 0 0.03 volts, volts is just a capital V for shorthand, and we want to get it in millivolts, well, you could multiply it to get millivolts on the top. So... I know that 1 volt equals 1,000 millivolts. Okay. By the way, this is just multiplication. If something is written on the top here, you multiply it. And if something is written in the bottom here, you divide it. So 0 0.3 times 1,000 divided by 1 equals, so point, I'm sorry, point oh three times 1,000. So we're going to move this over three places, one, two, three, put the decimal here instead, so that would mean it would equal 30. And we're going to check our units here, so volts divided by volts cancels out, and millivolts is left on the top, and that's what we wanted, so that would be 30 millivolts. By the way, that trick is called dimensional analysis. C, 1,000 amperes equals how many kilo amperes? Okay, well, I know that this is the base unit, and this is the base unit times 1,000. So, 
1000 amps and we want to get it into kilo amperes so we'll put that on the top so one kilo amp equals 1000 amps so you'll notice the units cancel out amps divided by amps is nothing and 1000 divided by 1000 leaves you just one so that equals one kilo ampere D 0 0.5 amperes equals how many milliamps okay so you get the idea 0 0.5 amps now we're going to multiply it by a conversion factor that we know from our table so we want milliamps in the top so and in order to cancel out amps we have to put that in the bottom so one amp goes in the bottom and one amp equals 1000 milliamps okay so we're gonna cancel out our amps left with only milliamps so that's good 0 0.5 times 1000 divided by 1 so 0 0.5 and we're going to multiply that by 1,000, so we're going to move it over three places. One, two, three. Fill those in with zeros. And that would be 500 milliamps. Last one here. 0 0.7 mega ohms equals how many ohms? So the prefix meg or mega means 1 million. So 0.7 times 1 million ohms equals how many ohms? 0 0.7. So since this is the base unit, I could simply multiply this by 1 million. To get our answer in ohms. But I prefer to check the units. So we're going to do 0 0.7 mega ohms. That's written shorthand. Mega or meg is a capital M. And ohms is the Greek letter omega. Now it's asking for it in ohms, and we want that to be on the top. Okay, and we know that one mega ohm is one million ohms. Cancel out, cancel out mega ohms on the top and bottom. Now we have 0.7 times one million divided by one. So 0.7. So there are six zeros in this, so we're going to have to move this over six places. One, two, three, four, five, six. Put our decimal point here. Fill the rest of these in with zeros. And we are left with ohms. So that's 700,000 ohms. Okay, I hope you found that math useful. And if you have any questions at all, just leave a comment below. And thanks for watching.